Uh, for those who wish to ask questions while I am in English, uh, just look, please do so. Now, um, uh, is this not has no party? Okay, let's begin. You write down your question, I'm gonna say something about this. Write it down first. I'd like to say something very quick, then you can ask the question. The term, uh, I heard from Pastor Danny, the word Christ Theophany. Uh, it's not Christ Christophany. You're not referring to Christo, right? You're, you're saying Christ Theophany. I use that word in my short cut titling of the message. In my videos or what. I re do you remember I used that title title, Brother Penan? Yes. Uh, is it video or audio? Video. Video, okay. Christ Theophany to combine Theophany and Christophany. Now, let's define some words. Um, theophany is God's manifestation. Christophany is Christ's manifestation. Angelophany is a proper term. If we're gonna be a copycat or let's say a representative or an objective reporter of someone else, why do you say angel of a name? Angel is a messenger. A messenger of God be called an angel. When you uh, epiphanize an angel, then you are called an angel of a name. Even we as men could be angels. Paul was called, called himself an angel. You accepted me as an angel of God, Galatians 4.14. So, let's talk about Christophany. In Daniel chapter 12, I learned this from John MacArthur. The word Christophany, I learned it from him when I was listening in DCS. Uh, he said, Daniel had a vision of the uncreated Christ, the Christophany. Even though Christ was not yet there, and I like his term. Being a Trinitarian, I like his term. The uncreated Christ. Wow. I was so revived while I was listening to his broadcast. So, Christophany, whether in the Old or in the New Testament, there is a Christophany. Because it's not Christ himself. When you say Theophany, it's not, not Theo himself. It's a manifestation of Theo. That's a, pre uh, that's a preferable adjustment. Let me uh, mix it. Okay. Now, Christophany, whether in Daniel 12 or in Revelation 10, Christ was already there, still the same Christophany. Now, um, what Pastor Danny used a while ago, oh, Jackson said, Parnell said, John said, Francis said, they're the Theophany of Jackson, the Parnell of John Francis. That's the terminology of the end time message circles. They don't use the word Christophany or Angelophany. They only use the word theophany for everything. Even if it looks like an angel or Brother Lito, have you seen uh, pictures from level two that they showed someone who had died in their deathbed, but an image of them suddenly an apparition appeared of that person who is still young. Like someone showed you in I, someone showed that to me in uh, Peralta Church when the church was still there. Brother, I'd like to show you a, a symphony. But he was showing, she was showing. They call it a representation symphony. Okay, representation symphony, whatever. The body, you have a body, a symphony body up there that will uh, dress you up. Now, that's not our topic. I'm going to just say the right use of word. When you use the word theophany, preferably, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying Pastor Danny's term is wrong. It could be it could be um, tolerated, to be permitted. Uh, but the preferable term is this. When you use the word theophany, you must be 100% in the likeness of Christ and the likeness of God. The likeness of God was 100% in Christ. If you have the 100% likeness of Christ, then you can be called a theophany. 
Well, but when level four today will say that you are you are the theophany or my theophany or what? It's actually Christ likeness, but it, it's not exact. It's not exact until you're resurrected from the dead. Literally, it's not exact because if you dare to say it's the exact same image, then you must have no uh, no faults anymore. You must not have no sin anymore, like the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Then you can claim your exact. But if you say, oh, there's no coming uh, resurrection or rapture anymore, we already have it. Then you must be perfect. Then you must have been glorified. Okay, now let me continue. Uh, those are the usage of words. Now, is there anything wrong if we quote someone else? Brother Barnum said, Brother Jackson said, Brother Grant said, Brother Francis said. Is there anything wrong? No. No. Very only objective. What is important is what the pastor said. You could prove all things. And how could you prove all things? You could not objectively report from them. Others may say, why do you need to objectively report from them? You just listen and that's enough. The reason you need to objectively report from them is you will not misunderstand them. You will not misrepresent them. So there's a difference between us quoting them, objectively reporting what they said, or what we said, what I said, than what they have been doing to Brother Branham or Brother Jasabarka. When they quote from the prophet, they spoon feed, similar to Nicolaitanism in the church, what an apostle said, oh, you, if someone has headship over to their pastor, he called that Nicolaitanism. Uh, uh, later, if, if I have time, I'd like to answer that. Okay, there's a proper headship and the wrong headship. Even they themselves, they try to proselyte others from uh, those they consider false. Why don't they respect other people's headship that from they consider false? So there's a right headship and wrong headship. And I, I to say it directly, Nicolaitanism headship is closing people's minds. They don't want objective report from others. They don't even want ordinary members to objectively report. You're not called to preach. What does Timothy say? Preach the word. Who is that addressed to? Just one person? Or for all of us? Get a picture? Now, if you can objectively report, then you don't, mis you don't misrepresent that brother or sister. The spirit of Nicolaitanism is not just in the doctrine. The spirit of Nicolaitanism is also even in minute accusations in the flesh. There's no spirit of love. Just looking for mistakes, then condemnation. The spirit of being buried in repentance is there is the spirit of love. Even the person has committed a mistake, a valid mistake, you do not condemn the person. You just reason out with that person with love. Today there is no such thing. That's why we have to distinguish. That's, this is very important. Now, only we who can go and objectively report from others without spoon feeding from them. Now is it wrong to spoon feed? As a beginner, you can. But we're not. Our, our, our target for perfection, the stature of a perfect man, is not a forever spoon cleaning. You know he put chapter 5, verse 12. You ought to have milk. Uh, uh, by the time you are happy, you ought to have meat. You are still needing milk. Now, um, so, let's differentiate an objective report to, to subjective report. Maybe what Pastor meant a while ago was this. You should speak on your own. You should not quote someone else. So this is what I call subjective. A report. This is what you believe. This is your opinion. When you're objective, you are taking what others say. 
not for the purpose of idolizing them, not for the purpose of spoon feeding from them, but for the purpose of being their end. Amen. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2.13 This is what most have failed to do. They, maybe they compared a, a few subjects, then over, and it's over. They're emotionally uh, influenced by others so that they will be partisans. Kapi kapi, partisan. Lastly, uh, before I go to question and answer, is there anything wrong with learning things from others? No. You know, uh, level three, the third group in the Philippines, uh, I heard from Pastor Barak and many others. They hate the term collective revelation. Of course, I'm not using the prophet's interpretation, meaning of collective revelation. I'm gonna give what their thought is. Their thought in collective revelation, you should not be learning from any other people. There's an apostle in Angeles that said, when I spend some money for you to attend there, if you remember this. Oh, listen to Jack, so listen to God, listen to John. Eventually, he look. What, who remembers that? No, no, not the name. Who, who remembers that uh, that statement was preached? So, one. <laughs> the newly, uh, the, uh, uh, the newly established apostle even uh, looked up to him then. Who oh, this? Because the music was good. But let's go to this talk. Why did he say that was wrong? The people will just get confused. The people will just get busy. You listen to many people, many persons. Because they're not used to that. The traditional ministry is to spoon feed. Then, do not listen to others because you're not supposed to collect from others because, because why? Because truth comes only from the people of God. Those who are not people, those false prophets, you're not supposed to listen to them because you might be deceived. That's the story. That's the story. Now, I'm going to say something. I've been saying this all many times already. You are aware to listen to others because you are not in the blind side. You, you should not listen to others. Ah. Because you, they are not in the plumb line. Oh, you should not listen to them because not, they are not in the plumb line. Yes. Okay. So the plumb line is supposed to be uh, in Tagalog we call this hulu. There is a weight in a string. You use this plumb line so that you can as a masonry, you will know the perfect uh, uh, measure, straight measure. You know this is uh, gravitationally perpendicular. Okay. So the plug line becomes a person, whether it's the prophet, it's Brother Jackson, it's Brother Arno. Now, that is a Nikolaitan teaching. Now, I'm not saying they could not be the plug line. But we all believe the Bible is a plan line. Mm-hmm. What does the prophet say? As long as it does not contradict the Bible, believe it. If it contradicts the Bible, I don't care who that person is. That he includes himself. It should not be. Yes. So we should know what is a plan line. The plan line now is not the person. Even if the person is used by God. The plan line now is the word of God. So, being Berean is very important. So you can get a plan line. You don't misrepresent others because you get what others say and bring it back to the word. Is it against the Bible or not? So, collective revelation by their understanding is not wrong. What, what is their understanding? Getting learning from others. Even they who converted from people from denominations. They do not teach them the ABCs of the Bible. They do not teach them how to pray. They just harvest what they already learned from the denominations. Why don't they say, Oh, forget everything you learned. We, 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 we teach you how to pray. We teach you how to open the Bible. Why do they recognize 
guys are the recruits from the denominations. And yet they are very quick to condemn. It came from him. It came from that person. It came from <laughs> So they, their only hatred are those who, who are close to them. <laughs> those in the message. Or those apps, those those not similar to our message are in error. So you must not listen to them. But they can acknowledge truths from the denominations. You can do you see that the uh, double standard Amen. attitude? Most message messages in the end time message came from the denominations. Amen. Amen. That's why they could recognize some truths. But they could not recognize truths from other message believers that are not the same with them. They are easily to condemn them. They can easily condemn them, yes. So, what God has called us to do is not to spoon feed from one singular group. God has called us to be God has called us to be mature in the world. Every fivefold minister that will go through and through. For God will not bring those people loyalty to them, to their flesh. Loyalty for for the work of God is temporary. Follow me as a man of Christ, and what will Paul teach? Paul will teach them impartiality, objectivity. Then if you go to progressive truth. You don't push a period of the karma, then even if the person dies, they will continue in the life of mind. They can prove and disprove because they're objective to prove to others. What about others? Can they prove and disprove? Maybe a few, but not all. Who among other message believers could look at others, could understand others? Only the pastor? Only the pastor are allowed to compare from others? But the members are shut out. They said they protect them. So, so forever, shut out forever, shut up forever. Within the confines of the fence. So, a true minister of God will teach their members to prove all things. They should push even their followers to look at the evidences of others and look at their evidences. With equal fairness, impartiality, without bias. There should not be temporary uh, maneuverings or manipulations. Listen a little, then you destroy their reputation. So, so, when I started here, I'd like to give a short testimony. When I started here, the Lord showed me the kind of spirit that previous church life came from. It is not something I want, uh, I wish to lose my reward in heaven, but I need to say, I spent so that you could attend, or the previous church before, could attend joint fellowships in other messages. I was even rebuked by them. Don't have a message. Why do you tell them to listen to others? So, if they don't want to put it, they don't want Why do you need to listen? No, I don't want you to just to condemn them. I want you to listen to them, respect them, and what you, learn what you can, then compare what I say. So there's a new new apostle here that said to me, I was condemning other end time for the purpose of comparing, but they're the ones who condemning me. What did I teach? Respect them, learn from them. Amen. Will they do that to me? They will never do that to me. Amen. Because from the start, their traditional way of ministry is to close the minds of people from listening to those who whom they don't agree with. They could not see that Nicolaita is in there. And what did the prophet preach? <laughs> the prophet did not preach condemnation to others, but study from all things by the scripture. Do not misrepresent a brother. That's very basic. Even, a, even without a prophet, you should know that the denomination should know that they experience that of what they just. Okay, this is, I'm gonna stop here. So, Brother Freddy, see, where's the questionnaire there? See that? Okay, Brother Freddy, you ask first. Uh, I just want to clarify before I give you the question. Uh, 
Did you know what the prophet said? The bride will have a ministry, a very humble ministry. Do you know what kind of humbleness that is? It's not just being kind. Maybe you what you, uh, you you meet someone, you think this is an error, but you're not fighting with him, you're not arguing with him, you're just docile and meek. And you're even helpful to your enemies. Humble ministry is this. And this is what others have not yet understood. Most others have not yet understood. You could learn from others. Sometimes you could learn from your detractors. That's very painful. You could recognize that God also used your detractors. The evil servants fighting you sometimes are used of God. That's the message of the anointed ones at the end time. If you can recognize that, then when you collect revelations from others, even those who do, do not hate or those who are not uh, destroying your reputation, then you're fully anointed by God. You're the one who is the seed that will be harvested in the plant. You know the plant? When the, during harvest season, this is the ground, this is the seed. In the harvest season, there's the seed. During harvest season, what happens to the stalk? To the leaves of the stalk? They dry out, they turn yellow. Because all the sustenance goes to the top of the stalk. Then you are the manifestation of that stalk. The message. So, how will that take place? It's a humble ministry. You could, the prophet even taught this in the church booklet. You could gather up all the fruits from others. Uh, why did they accuse the prophet as the protector of the revelation? Okay, who else has a question? A Tagalog question. We ask you a Okay, Tagalog is a Tagalito. Tagalog is a Tagalito. I will interpret. Can anyone interpret? Ah, cannot go to the prophet. Don't say, I love you, Pablo. Tungkol do sa lalaki na mas mabuti sa lalaki na huwag humikot. Diba? Ngayon, meron ba tayong account sa Bible na sinabi ng tayo ng Isumisto? Meron bang pagkakamali si Pablo doon sa sinabi niya? Na hindi naman sinabi ng tayo ng Isumisto, hindi sarili niyang tulawa? Na sinasabi niya, diba? Meron mo. Is it good? It's good for a man not to touch a woman. Yes, yes. Woman. Seven one. Is there other account by Jesus Christ? Well, you're just asking for a verse. I know not any. Okay. So that's the simple question. Okay. Who else? Brother Nico. Please, ah, please translate that because. You should be elevated to an international apostle. Okay. The question is this. Is there a statement by Christ, right? Yes. Saying the same thing. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. That is your question, right? Did Christ say that? Okay. That's your question. Ay si Tagalog. Mayroon pa si Tagalog na. Huwag siya gumawin na. Ayan, tinatayin na natin siya kasi gano'n ko eh. There is something wrong. Apostle says, but Jesus Christ, ano kong in the Bible, Jesus Christ is? Amen. You know, you know, it's like this. The Apostle does not have to repeat everything, every word. Christ does not have to say every word. Even this is what the message uh, um, uh, preachers explain. Uh, not everything is written in the Bible, so the prophet is to explain it. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as he doesn't contradict the Bible. Now, here, even if Christ does not say that statement, it does not mean the statement is wrong. Maybe you misunderstood the statement. Because when you say touch, it's not physical, just touching accidentally or what? Or taking hands. 
The word touch could mean something deep. The word touch could be fornication. It is fornication. Even in the Old Testament, the word touch could be understood as fornication. You see? So I hope it clears up your mind. When Paul said that it was not wrong, he was just expounding on what Christ said. This is the nearest statement of Christ. He talked about fornication. And he, he, he said, uh, save for fornication, there must be no divorce. So, you understand, Paul was expounding on his word. Okay? So there's a... Uh, how, how do we know that uh, some uh, our doctrine is right uh, right when uh, if we we did not listen or adopt the the other explanation how do we know that it is right if we okay, that is just like the master teacher you remember to me how do you know that you are in the truth okay I'm just going to give a quick answer You know that verse, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Then you know the urine and human today. It means you have what the parents did in Acts 17, 11. They checked day and night whether those things were so. So you have many conflicting preachers, many different versions. Now why did God allow those things? It's not just to deceive and collect the hairs. They are there for your perfection. Amen. And what comes perfection? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that is what the Nicolaitan spirit has been suppressing. Suppressing all through these ages. All through this time. They've been suppressing people from objectively comparing by the scripture. And how do you know? Because if you compare objectively, and that's a major doctrine, it will be as clear as daylight. I'll give you some basic doctrines. Baptism in Jesus' name. Is it as clear as daylight? The name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Godhead, the indwelling of God in Christ, the union of the Father and the Son, in the Spirit, the Spirit of the Son, in the Holy Ghost, is that clear as daylight? Is it as clear as daylight? Historically, the church ages? And the parallels in history, how everything fulfilled? Is it as clear as daylight? There is a judge counseling ministry in the Bible? Kuku ministry? Is it as clear as daylight? It can be proven. The major doctrines can be proven. Predestination, eternal security, can they be proven? The original sin? Everything. Those major doctrines. And each one of us owe to God to prove those things. You know, I'd like to just say this a little bit further. This is what we lack in this church. The spirit of proving all things. We do not uh, ingrain them in our children, in our family. In my habits of church, we could grow numerically. Although others are growing numerically more than us. But that we are missing the mark. Why? They are not being taught, discipled, trained to prove all things. So even if we know, we should not be stupid. In effect, we are also doing that by our laziness to put effort in this progressive ministry of training them. Uh, who raised your hand? Brother Pastor Dan. It's alright, it's alright. I'm gonna translate it. Meron kang nagkakabayan na yung home sa akin. Tungkol sa pag-report. Ito, yung pag-report yung mga nagkakabayan tungkol sa narinig sa'yo. Ano ba? Ah, ano kaya ang tama na kapag nasabihin mo doon sa nag-report pag nandiyan na? Nasabihin ni ah, Ito po ay uh, pahayag ng Diyos na sinabi ng Papa Francis. O 
Ito po ang sabi ni Francis, Fred Francis. Okay. Sino mo ba lang dice? So, thank you for your... Uh, that's a constructive criticism. And that's a good question. Let me repeat the question in English. Isn't it better to say what God has revealed to Brother Francis than to say what Brother Francis said? Okay, this is my answer. And this is so you could uh, distinguish between lifting a person up and being objective. If you say, this is what God has revealed to Brother Francis, that should not belong to objective report. That is not objective. That is subjective. Even myself, you know why? I'm putting myself on equal plane for scrutiny with others. You should not immediately say, just because I said it, it's already God's revelation. Amen. I, myself, am even subject to correction. So, if you are objectively reporting, you should not use this is God's revelation to Brother Francis. It could be true, it could not be true. So when you are in the objective re reporting phase, you should not use that word, but yet, yet. When you are in the subjective report phase, and you yourself have seen, have proven it from the scriptures, it is strong, it is foundationally strong, scripturally strong, scripturally sound, then we can say, this is God's revelation to Brother Francis. That is subjective. Why? You've seen it yourself. You can stand it by yourself. So, that is my answer. What is the proper use of the term? Right now, if we are quoting from someone else, the presumption is this. We are not closing anything. We are not finalizing. It could be true. It could not be true. The important thing is the spirit among the followers, the listeners, is to go back to the scriptures. The challenge is go back to the scriptures. When we have objective reports, and we should be continuing to do that. Chronicle or series. The spirit is the same spirit as before. The walk of the Spirit is all for us to go back to the Scripture. Because if we do not have that kind of Spirit, then we spoon to be, oh, this is the truth. And this is the attitude of the other denominations. What was, what could only come out from the pulpit is, it's the Spirit of the Catholic Church. This is the absolute, this is the truth. And I even heard others say, even if your pastor commits a mistake, he is correct. You see that kind of Spirit? It's an idolatry kind of spirit. Maybe to make the right understanding for that statement, not correct, you will still respect the pastor and just show him where he committed a mistake. It's not the prophet. I can commit a mistake. Just show it to me. Even a janitor can do that. Yes. Let's sit down. I might have gone off on one way or the other. He might have gone off. <laughs> no one of us is absolute, but the scripture is absolute. Amen. So that's what we should not miss. Brother Fred. Uh, uh, we find about the uh, the 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 understand what is right and what is wrong. But Brother Burham says about uh, don't feel the need to correct me by the scripture. What's the question? That's the uh, uh, that's Brother Burham says. Now we ask about how can we define how can we say that this man is true and without the basic of the whole the scripture. We can uh, we, we check also without the spoken word or with, with the scripture. The scripture not the spoken word. By the way, I'd like to comment when the said prophet said say what the tape say. How many of you have heard the statement? Now when he said that say what the tape say, what he meant was this. He does he does not want to be misrepresented. Amen. It, they, it doesn't mean all these statements are absolute. Doesn't mean that way. Okay. So, we can quote, but not for the purpose of truth, but for the pur purpose of reference. Get the picture? To be, being very that reference could be biblical, could not be biblical. 
That could have many purposes. Okay? So we use that sometimes. Okay. Brother Francis, is it, it is, our, is it our free will or is it the Holy Ghost to, to uh, distinguish right or wrong? Is it the Holy Ghost or is it, is it our free will? So our decision. Uh, please hold to that question. Don't forget it. I'd like to ask some answers. You know why we quote also from the prophet? What is the use now of the quote? Quoting if it's not to be used like a Bible. The use of the quote is this. We also listen to others. We read booklets. We should hear the other uh, uh, players in other mediums. There is, if we hear preachers, we transcribe them. It's this. The use of the code is not to elevate him from the others. The use of code is this. The prophet, God used his prophet to open up some subjects that are unclear to us. So he was, without the prophet used by God, we could not understand them. So there are some people who say, I don't need to read the message of the prophet. God could reveal it directly to me. You know, aside from the prophet, even the pastor, the ministers, even the person who shared to you the gospel, everyone is being used by God. So you should not say, and someone told me this before in, in school, when I was studying, don't share to me what your, your revelation, God will show to me. Now, why did the Bible say we should share the word with each other? God does not work that way. He's going to share the with you. All the fruits there. Everyone who has studied, but we should not get it from Father and yeah. No. The same thing. The reason we read for the prophet, we go for the prophet, same thing we learn from all our own pastors. There are certain things we have not yet understood that he will explain. But since he will show me where it's in the Bible, or let's say it was, it's not directly shown, it does not contradict the Bible. It gives us, it opens up our understanding in the Bible. Even if those words are not directly explained in the Bible. But it does not contradict the Bible. Baptism in Jesus' name and many others. Uh, spoken word reproduction, many others. Dinosaurs in the ark, many others. So, if you understood from the prophet those things, then God used the prophet for you to understand them. But does not mean you made the quotation the absolute. Uh, brother Ferdinand, uh, Menon has a question. Could you repeat the question, Brother Menon? Is it the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost? To distinguish the, the right or wrong, or is it our free will? Uh, good question. It's like this God gave us a mental faculty to understand right and wrong. That's in the Bible. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 40. Read the other scripture there that I might not memorize. Now, if God gave it, it's also the Holy Ghost who predestined it for you to see that. Now, God gave you a free will to discern right and wrong. If God gave you that free will, it's also the work of the Holy Ghost for you to substantiate that from the Scriptures. Because others who use the word Holy Ghost, they mean supernatural revelation. Oh, God showed me something in a dream, in a vision, in an audible voice. They will hold that supernatural experience as the absolute. Did you know that? That's what's happening to the Pentecostals. That's what, what's happening to them. The experience is more important than the scripture. But those experiences were supposed to lead you back to the scripture, not away from it. So the answer is this. Both is the work of the Holy Ghost, but you're involved in it. You should not be blindly led away by that emotion, emotional experience. And many people could use that for a deception. Yes, you have this healing. You have this experience. That's why it is. That's how the devil works. They lead you away from the scripture because of that Holy Ghost experience. And even that could be a genuine Holy Ghost experience. But that's just a physical healing, a physical miracle. 
But God works the simplest way. God reveals Himself in simplicity. Okay. Uh, just one last question. Uh, okay. uh, the question is how can we reach God? Uh, there's a spoken word without the speaker. There's a spoken word with the speaker. This is how you should treat the spoken word of the prophet. Remember, when you say spoken word, it could be understood as any other preaching. Okay? Now, when you say spoken word, you're talking about the prophet's yeah, sermon. Written down or spoken on the book You check the truth by the scriptures. That's what the prophet Amen. said. Amen. So what is the use of his sermons? It is a reference, a clue, how the Bible should be understand, understood. But you still manifest as also what the prophet said, being very end, not the word very end, but the, the, the actions of comparing things. It should not contradict scripture. Meet that man if he contradicts scripture. There's no statement of the prophet, he does not commit mistake. There's no statement of the prophet, all revelations have been revealed to him. There's no statement of the prophet, you should not believe any other teachings that I have not taught. There's no teaching like that. But if people add them, they're adding to what the prophet taught. God bless you. So Let's give God a good Amen.